for a recess. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I ask for unanimous consent to submit testimony from the National Auto Dealers Association and letters of support into the record. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's been over two years now since the CFPB issued their flawed auto lending guidance, a guidance that was issued without allowing public comment period, which I find a bit unusual. Uh, and despite 12 bipartisan letters sent to the CFPB by Congress, they have yet to address what I would consider the faulty and unclear guidance issued back in March of 2013. However, I also find it a bit interesting and coincidental to see that the CFPB finalized their rule to oversee non-bank auto finance companies just yesterday, on the eve of today's hearing. What we see here is the CFPB's attempt to go outside the formal rulemaking process and change the market without doing their research. November 4th, 2013, Director Cordray sent a letter in response to Senator Shaheen from my state of New Hampshire and Senator Portman that admitted they did not take into account the impact their guidance would have on consumers. Ironically, they are the agency that are supposed to protect consumers, but the guidance would, in fact, in my view, harm them, and it doesn't stop with consumers. The guidance impacts not just auto dealers, RV dealers, motorcycle dealers, uh, international dealers, and even our manufacturers. My good friend and I, Mr. Uh, Perlmutter, uh, and I have introduced H.R. 1737, a bill that is so simple and so narrow that provides just clarity, uh, fairness, and due process. The bill simply asks the CFPB to rescind their flawed guidance and reissue it under a more transparent process by consulting other regulators and allowing public comment. So I have a couple of very quick questions. Uh, Mr. Sharp, I'd like to first um, address my, my question to you. Do you think it would be beneficial and helpful to allow the public to comment on guidance that would impact a longstanding auto loan practice that has been proven uh, to benefit consumers? Yes, absolutely. We strongly support the legislation and think that um, this is an area where the CFPB just got it wrong, it needs to start over, and a big part of getting it right is understanding the market, and they're not going to get that without asking the public and stakeholders what the effects would be. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Ireland, can you um, tell me what your thoughts are on why H.R. 1737 is necessary? Well, I think it's, a, it's necessary because the Bureau <clears throat> does not take advantage of the opportunity for public comment. Regardless of whether or not it's required, it's a fantastic research tool, and it lets you find out what the issues are and what the problems are with what you're proposing. And I, when I was at the Federal Reserve, I looked at public comment as an opportunity. I think the Bureau should view it the same way, and if they're not going to do that, maybe they have to be led there. And that's what this bill does, and I think that's appropriate. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Pierce, do you agree that the public should have the ability to comment on the CFPB guidance? Yeah, I mean, I think generally, Mr. Ireland alluded to this before, doing material guidance of any kind is always enhanced if you have a public process. And also, if they did it by rulemaking, they would have to consider the costs. Um, and that's a really important, obviously, as, as you mentioned, it's important for them to consider what the effect on consumers would be. Mr. Miller, would you concur? Uh, no, no, not so much. Um, you, don't, you don't think that the public should have the... Well, I think it should be consultative. Um, I do not think it should necessarily require the full um, comment, uh, uh, a notice and comment of the Administrative Procedures Act, which is um, almost as tortured as trying to pass a bill through Congress. And agencies, not at all unusual for agencies to proceed on a case-by-case -case basis of recognizing they can't anticipate every circumstance. And it is usually the, the regulated industry that asks for guidance to, you know, kind of tell us, you know, what, how are you thinking about this? And, well, the, and the guidance that, 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 that CFPB issued uh, seems to make a lot of sense to me. It, it, you're now buying loans and you have a portfolio in which white borrowers in the same circumstances, with the same credit score, with the same loan to value, have significantly lower interest rates, and you have liability for that. And if you want to avoid liability, you might want to think about the way you're going about buying those loans. Reclaiming my time, I think that um, 
in my I, I would I would respectfully disagree. I think the public should have the ability to issue public comment, uh, considering they are being now uh, by the CFPB uh, viewed in a in a very very different Time way. Time, gentleman, is expired. And I'm going to squeeze in Coach Williams from Texas uh, 